Welcome to Real Time, Florida Sportsman. This week, we're in Bradenton. We're fishing for an inshore slam. It's time to find the shortest route to the hottest bite. We scan the Florida Sportsman community looking for the best fishing reports and travel to make real anglers our local guides. Give me some of that! Together, we let you in on secret spots and hometown moves. That's what I'm talking about! Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's done for now. Pulling up to the flat, you know, this looked no different than any other spot. You know, we're running out in the middle of the river and all of a sudden we just stop in five feet of water. She's like, oh, this is the spot. And I was, oh, really? This is it? But I tell you, a couple minutes into it, we're already hooking up a bit. <laughs> all coming up on Real Time Florida Sportsman. Justin Whitfield, 14 year old freshman in high school, cheerleader, but probably more importantly, you know, a great fisherman. From a small fishing town of Cortez in the Bradenton area, has the fish dialed in this area. What's unique about Chaston is she fishes a lot of these tournaments, and the ones that she wins, she takes the money and donates it back to charity. Our plan was to meet Chaston and her family at a local ramp. Her parents were actually gracious enough to run the camera boat for us. So we launched the Triton, and you know, right at the boat ramp was all the bait that we needed. Chaston surprised me right off the beginning. You know, a 14-year-old small girl, you know, picks up a 12-foot net and hauls this net out there with the best of them. You know, most of my buddies can't throw a 12-foot net, so to watch a 14-year-old girl pick up a 12-foot, you know, quarter mesh, quarter-inch mesh net and open the thing like a pancake and get, you know, the bait that we needed, that was pretty impressive. And I knew this girl was the real deal. She wasn't just somebody out there, you know, seeking attention on social media. This girl could fish. So the weather this morning, you know, we're a couple days before a full moon. I had a little concern. We actually were scheduled to fish later in the week, but knowing what the moon, the full moon can do to fishing, we've kind of changed our plans around, made it a point to get here a couple days before the full moon. You know, winds were supposed to be light, but first thing this morning, we did have a little bit more breeze than we expected. All right, first thing this morning, Chaston Whitfield, you've already proven yourself to me. Throw in the 12-foot net so we know you're the real deal. We're sitting here in the west central section of the Florida Sportsman Forum, Sarasota Bay. What do you have planned for us today? What's going um, on? We're going to try to catch some redfish, trout, and snook. So you do something a little different. You're out here fishing a lot of tournaments every weekend. Tell people what you do if you actually win. I give the money back to the charity. And, and you're the real deal. You're actually winning a lot of these tournaments. I follow you. You do pretty good. <laughs> Thanks. And you're, you know, which is great. I mean, to give the money back. And you're really big into educating as well, right? Yes. Um, I want to try to teach the Girl Scouts how to, um, like, tie knots and throw cast nets and stuff like that. You know, how important is that nowadays? Get these kids out of the house, away from their iPads, you know, and what's really unique is, and what's great for you is you have the support of your parents, right? Yes. You guys they, live on the water, you're out here every weekend. Yeah, they have helped a lot. Like, my mom's like my momager, almost. <laughs> <laughs> your momager, that's a new one, I like that. <laughs> All right, so we're on the north side of Sarasota Bay. You say there's a lot of trout in here. Let's throw some tremors, let's see if we can get a bite. Okay. You know, these small white baits, you load the wells up with them. You get out to these areas and you just start taking handfuls of these little chummers, toss them out there, and I'm telling you, if there's any fish in that area, you can quickly find them. Ooh, see that? Came back and got it. That's oh, trout. Oh. Huh? I'm sure this place is loaded on these grass flats. They cannot resist those little white baits. Same, same limit over here, 15 to 20 inches? Yep. The male too, you feel him grunting there. Nice. You know, with chumming, you're out on this big flat and there's really nothing that you know, kind of you need know, small potholes, white areas that you can shoot for. But you know, when you bring in this element of chumming, it, it brings a visual aspect to it. You're starting to see these fish beat on the surface, you know, and it really gets you going. Uh oh! Finally. Dad's got one. That's not a bad trout right there. Getting a little better. And they got such soft, ma soft mouths. Yeah. Look at them spitting up all the chummers <laughs> we're throwing out there. It's a little better one there. Yeah. Getting into the eating size. So you said there was trout on this flat. It didn't take long. A couple uh -uh. minutes, two yeah. fish in the boat. I wonder why. This seems so productive. What, is what I'm doing. A little guy. 
What's your favorite fish out here to catch? Um, I like snook. Yeah. Snook and redfish. I'm kind of biased to snook myself. Jastin was, you know, she was throwing live bait. I decided to get the Yozuri minnow out, toss that out there, and get some fish on hard bait. All right, so the technique that they're really utilizing around here is just chumming with these white baits, little scaled sardines on these grass flats, and the trout are super aggressive on them, you know. What's those little Yozuri minnow? <laughs> just like. Perfect. Oh, blind squirrel gets one on the Spanish mackerel on the Yozuri. Look at that. Look at the teeth on that thing, man. We saw him back there slashing through the chummers. Threw that Yozuri minnow in there. It didn't take long. On the East Coast, we have a run of these things. Catch them all day long. Yeah, we did great at the first spot. Plenty of trout. Um, you know, some Spanish mackerel, like I said. And, but you know, I was ready to move on. We had caught enough trout. I knew this area had more to offer, and I was ready to move on and look for the snook and redfish. This segment is brought to you by Penn. Let the battle begin. 50 years ago, Penn built the toughest spinning reel the world has ever known. Until now. Introducing the fifth generation of Spinfisher, the Penn Spinfisher V, with a watertight design that keeps saltwater out, a full metal body to withstand heavy loads, Big fish. and the upgraded slammer drag system for twice the drag pressure. The Penn Spinfisher V is a new state-of-the-art weapon from Penn. Let the battle begin. So coming off this you know, big vast flat, we decided to make our way over to one of the banks. So a little more protected shoreline, mangrove line shoreline, and we we're gonna look for these redfish and snook in this area. All right, so we changed gears. Back in this bay, trying to get out of the wind, man. It's blowing today. Yeah. So what's back in here? Um, some redfish, maybe a snook or two, maybe. So just like this shallower bay, this grass in here, sitting up yeah. in here and on this mangrove shoreline? Yeah, some of the potholes, they kind of come and hide into them and maybe we'll get them out. Looking for Mr. Redfish. Most of my stuff on my coast, on the east coast of Florida, we're targeting, you know, all structure. Be it fallen trees, docks, boats, everything, it's, it's just a lot of structure. Out here it's so much different that they're looking for potholes, you know, on these flats or along these shorelines. Just little deeper sections of water that are holding these fish. <laughs> Tight in the weeds there. A little snook maybe. Man, they are fun on that light tackle though. And the circle hook right in the corner of the mouth. Pretty little snook. And the green on him. Look at the color on this fin. You can tell he's in that grass. Beautiful fish. Once we found them, once it started blowing up on the chummers, it was just, it was game on, you know. First, I was throwing baits out there, and Chaz was throwing baits out there. They were just free lining these little pilchers, and it seemed like they just kept running down into the grass. Decided to throw on the old popping cork, you know. Everybody loves to watch a popping cork go under the water. Chuck it out there in a popping cork, maybe a foot, a foot and a half below the cork, and they were rising up, and they were just going to town on these pilchards. Oh. Oh, Bob with a popping cork there, you see that thing yeah. blow up on him? That didn't take long. Pop that popping cork and boom! We just moved around a little bit in this cove and found a little deeper pocket. That's all it took. Just something a little bit different. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, he's all the way by those mangroves. Oh. Great. Now I gotta worry about catching the fish, and I gotta worry about keeping them away from a porpoise. Yeah, like when we this catch is a big bait, red. Yeah, they'll like come up and tear your net open. This is a nice red right here. This is what we were looking for. Wow. That is a pretty fish. And that light tackle man is really feeling. Look at this fish. Top side slot, man. <laughs> It's a pretty one right there. That's 
switched over, that bait seemed to be running down in the weeds. I just put that little popping cork on. Popped it once. As soon as I popped that cork, man, he just jumped on it. Let this one go? Sure. First redfish was bigger than I thought it was gonna be. I was expecting maybe smaller slot size fish, and this was a good fish. I was really happy to come over to this area, to the Bradenton area, to the west coast, and catch this fish of this size. I know this area is known for it, but you know, to my first one of the morning, I wasn't expecting it. It took us a while to find this fish, and we finally found him in the corner of this cove. And it really wasn't much different, maybe just a little bit deeper water, but the fish were all congregated in this one area. There he went. A little snook. More with him. You see that one ate the bait that fell off. A little snook in that same little area. You know, it's amazing. You find these little pockets, a little deeper water, something just a little different on this flat. And everything's in there. Just kind of keep them happy with the chum. You just pick them off. Perfect colors. Yellows and greens. I'm gonna let this one go. This segment is brought to you by Mercury Marine, number one on the water. The Mercury Verado, outstanding corrosion protection, proven reliability. Yeah. And it comes with all this. Meet Tom from customer support. Whoa, he's a hugger. Huh? Not really into that, Tom. Thank you. This is Nick from Field Testing, runs these babies thousands of hours. They're solid. Nick? This is Cheryl and Bobby, our prop engineer. He turns horsepower into performance. Oh, and the rest of the gang's here. It's good to have Mercury behind you. Meet the rest of the team at mercurymarine.com. Tom, the hugger. So pretty standard setup for this area. You know, 2500 series reel, 7.6 rod, 10 to 17 pound rod. This is just 15 pound spider wire. Got a piece of 30 pound fluorocarbon leader small little circle hook matched up perfectly for this four inch white bait. Jazz fishes a lot of tournaments and, and talking to her it, it amazes me how many different tournaments there are over here and typically in the past most people think of tournaments as professional fishermen but a lot of these are changing you know they're catered to more children more you know to women divisions and even the CCA the CCA now has one that's starting in May it's 100 days long you know, and you have the ability to win a boat, motor, and trailer if you catch one of five tagged redfish. So she's explaining this to me. This is a great opportunity as well with women and youth divisions. Fish on. I think they're a little beyond you there. Yeah. As soon as it hit the water, the cord disappeared. I'll tell you what, cork fishing, bobber fishing, fun stuff. That's another red, I just feel I'm digging. Oh, look at that wake you just kicked up. As soon as it hit the water out in there. Oh boy, he's making a run for the trees. We've been all over this flat and just found this one little corner with a little deeper water. You know, so often that's just the case. You'll find a little area that they just like to be in. They're just schooled up in there. Nice. Wow. <laughs> That's a good one, another good one. Yeah. All similar size in this school. That circle hook, just right in the corner of the mouth. As soon as that bait hit the water, he grabbed it. And the nice thing about these circle hooks, you just reel, you know, especially, and this is good for kids too, you know, they don't have to sit there and worry about getting a hook set. You just get them a circle hook, just tell them to reel when they see the bobber go down. Not as much fun as they can get right there. <laughs> tell you what, you still need to get one. Yeah. Let that one get back in the water. Get you one. God, pretty fish. Woo! Awesome. Thanks so much. The great thing about these popping corks is that's why they call them popping corks because you pop them. They make noise and a lot of people just chuck them out there and let them sit but really that's not really what they're designed for. They have that concave head 
You give it a good snap, it creates a little disturbance on top of the water, gets the fish's attention, and that's exactly what happened. A couple clicks, pops, made some noise, redfish rose up, and off that bobber went. Yes. You got one. Good job. I knew you got in there deep enough, it was gonna be over with. <laughs> Is this about the size fish that you're typically catching? Yeah. Yeah, it's about. And you guys get schools of hundreds of these. Yeah, they start tailing on the flats and it's so cool. You can throw on them and one will eat and they'll spook off. They just don't seem to be spooking off. We got them in this little corner here. And every time your bait gets in that little area, you get bit. A lot better than sitting in front of the TV, right? Oh yeah. Actually, this is a lot better than sitting at school today. Yes. Absolutely. Teachers, thank you for the excused absence. <laughs> for the betterment of all kids fishing. That's just cookie cutter. They're all about the same size. Yeah. All about keeper size. Top end slot. I'll land him for you. They're all in there eating that white bait. Yeah. Loaded them on, baits in on a popping cork, pop it every now and then, and just coming up, rising up, and taking it. Let this one go. Chaz was really happy. You know, there tends to be a lot of pressure on someone when they come out here. And to put that pressure on a 14-year-old girl, you know, it's not easy to put somebody on fish. And she knew the pressure was on her. But I tell you, man, she, she delivered, and I knew she was happy we found that school of fish. This segment is brought to you by Ray Marine. Don't just go fishing, go hunting underwater with Ray Marine. When you fish competitively for a living, you need sonar you can trust. I switched to Ray Marine Chirp Sonar to give me incredible underwater vision. I switched to Ray Marine Chirp Sonar to see structure so sharp and fish targets so clear, it's like reality. So don't lose faith in your sonar again. Make the switch to chirp in Ray Marine Visionality and see the real world below. All right, in this week's seminar, we're going to talk to you about cast nets. Today's show, we use an assortment of Missouri hard baits as well as live bait. And what we utilized today was a lot of chumming with white baits, and really the key to that is to catch a lot of bait in the morning. Chaz is not a big girl, 14 year old female, and uh, a lot of times these people say, well, it, they can't throw a 10, net, a 10 foot net or a 12 foot net. You threw that 12 foot net this morning like, like you were a champ. Yeah. So Chaz and I actually use the same technique. She has a little extra rotation in hers um, to get a net out there, but she showed you this morning she can easily throw a 12 foot net. So the first you want to do is go ahead and get nice coils in your hands. I'm right handed, the line, it gets looped on my left wrist, and I coil the line into my left hand. I grab the horn, I slide the horn all the way to the top and clear the net. This is really the important part is to make sure the net is cleared. Meaning that you want to go ahead and make sure none of these are stuck together or overlapped on each other. And this is the key to have a net that's going to open up all the way. So I know my net is cleared. I first want to do is slide down a couple feet, two or three feet. And I take a grip on the, on the net. I take one loop. I choke back down to the bottom. I like to go at about waist level, choke back up on it again and take another grip on the net. Now I have everything in my left hand. Next what you want to do is just get maybe an eighth of the net in your right hand. And I'm holding part of this net and what I want to do is reach up underneath my left arm and put this over my left shoulder. So I have about an eighth of the net over my left shoulder. Now I have two lead lines coming off, I grab the one closest to me. What I like to do is go ahead and grab it, hold on to the, my thumb there. And now what I want to do is take about a third of the net that's left off and throw it over my right arm. I slide my hand up and I catch all of this net here. Roll my fingers over with my pointer and my thumb. I take a pinch of the weight and I'm holding it here. This is gonna be my throwing position right here. The last thing I'm gonna let go is my right hand. And the very last thing is to let go of these two fingers right here. 
This is when I rotate, I let go. This is the last thing I let go and causes that net to open up all the way. And honestly, the best place to practice this is in the front yard. It's one of those things that you have to get out there. You have to just put your time in, practice at home, not in the water. The net's a lot lighter, it's a lot easier to deal with. Practice in the front yard until you can get that thing to open up all the way. So, do you have any other friends that are like you out here on their on their own boats, or are you? Not girls. No, are you the only one. Yep. You're the on ball out. Yep. And we found some snook. They were a little tighter into the mangroves, a little closer in, but you know, every third or fourth fish, you know, I was finding snook. It took a while for Chaz. You know, she was looking for that, you know, completion of the slam, but finally she got bit, and she got bit by a good one. Ooh. ooh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wow. He's bad. Oh, and I got him on the plug. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. You're hooked up on the white bait. I threw that Yozuri over his head. Boom. Doubled up again. Oh, he's coming right, he's at, coming right at you. Good oh. snook. Good snook. <laughs> All right, it's a jack, but still, it was, it was a good take on the artificial. It's yeah. not that snook that you got there. Look at that thing. Man, it's a good one. Ooh. Oh, ho, 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 ho. he thumped that. Yeah. yeah, you knew it was something good when wow. he bit. That is a, you're catching some quality fish today. You got a nice trout. I think you got a whole, you know, a legitimate slam. Yeah. Keeper slam. Well, was a keeper. Hey, good job. You were gonna let him go anyway. <laughs> so I got the slam, okay? But really, when you talk about it, you know, you get a keeper slam or a slam. I got the slam. Chaz, on the other hand, she got the keeper slam. She had a keeper sized trout, a snook, and a red. To do that in one day, that's telling you something. What do you say? We got the best of this cove? Yeah. Go back to the house, get some food. Yep, sounds good. Perfect evening after a great day of fishing. All in all, it was a great experience fishing with Chaston. From her tournament, you know, winnings to her donating them to her, you know, being involved in cheerleading at school and to being a good student and, and heavily involved in fishing. It's just, all in all, I was so impressed with Chaston. And I gotta tell you, her family is probably, you know, even more a part of of her success than anything else. To have parents that are actively involved in fishing, that are willing to take you out fishing or even get you a small boat when you're that young, you know, that's what it takes. It takes parents to get involved, parents to be active in what you do, and really to get these kids out on the water and teach them fishing. <laughs>